Thank you for coming uh, to my 3D printing seminar. Um, what I'm going to show you is how to make your own items and how to print them out, or basically how to use the library to print these items out. Um, it's simpler than everybody thinks. Even though it's new, it seems scary. Um, uh, it's really not that bad. The, the trickiest part is learning the software to make the things yourself. And this is what it's about. We have all sorts of wonderful websites where you can print out ready-made things, but the idea is to show you how to make anything with 3D printing. I myself am a theater designer. I use 3D printing quite a lot to make things like set models, as you see here. Um, other items I'll show you later, uh, credit card, or excuse me, business card holders, brochure holders, tools we use in the production of theater. We use the 3D printer a lot. So once you get the idea, once you get past that sort of uh, hesitation about making your own stuff, you'll see just how easy it is and how it can be um, very exciting and very, very helpful. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through a tutorial. I'm gonna show you how to make a wrench, which is a very simple idea, very basic shape, which will give you a, which will give you an introduction to just how simple and easy it is to make your own items. Now we're gonna do everything through the library page. So if you have the library page up, I'm gonna ask you to click on Tech Lab. You see, you got all this stuff, you see Nick's handsome, handsome face there saying hello. Uh, and what we're looking for is 3D printing. We're gonna start there. Um, actually, we're going to do, uh, I'm sorry, equipment and software is where we wanna start because we gotta make it first before we print it. Now, they have links to three things. Tinkercad, free 3D design uh, software, great for beginners. SketchUp, also free, a little uh, dicier to use, but also pretty simple. And then Thingiverse, which has tons and tons and tons of files created. So if you need something that's already made, a business card holders, um, a phone case, just about anything. If you are a Game of Thrones fan, you can find hundreds and hundreds of Hodor doorstops. I'm not kidding. Um, but we're gonna make something. So we're gonna go to Tinkercad. You click on that, you get a little dimble and boom. You come up with this lovely thing here with all these little items and issues and gigaws. Uh, as of a side, it is showing up right on Zoom. Um, we're going to go down to start tinkering. Yay, okay. My apologies. Now we're ready to tinker. Uh, let's go, we won't do this. We'll go ahead, create, okay, do you have this screen up? Create new designs. <coughs> there we go. Okay, here we are. You can see we have this thing. This is the work plane, this big space. We know it's the work plane because it says in big letters right here, work plane. This is where all the work action is gonna be. So everything there um, that we'll be creating will be on this work plane. Now, one of the most important things you need also in this is this little uh, box up here. See that little box that I'm going over? That's generally called a view cube. If you hold your mouse down and click around it, you see what it does is it moves around the work plane so you can see it from different views. You also see that certain areas of the work plane turn blue. So if I click on this corner, top left corner, it'll make an isometric, front, top, so forth and so on. I like these isometric views because it's easy to see the depth, the texture of the design. So I would say let's work there. Also, just as a side, here's a little Easter egg. If you hold down control while moving the mouse, you can move it independently without having to go to the view queue. 
And the mouse wheel, if you zoom it, or if you wheel it towards you, you zoom out. If you wheel it away from you, you zoom in. If you hold it down, you pan. See how that works? Navigate the network plane. Give you a thing, control. Hold down left mouse button, mouse button, you can navigate. Wheel away, zoom in, wheel towards, zoom out, hold down mouse button, pan. Okay? Make sense so far? Let's make something. Basically, everything you make, models that I make, even though they may seem somewhat complicated, business card holder, everything is basically a creation of basic shapes. So basically, that's what we'll, well, we'll stop saying basically for one thing. Uh, so one of the things we'll do is take those shapes and manipulate them, and that's how you can make objects. So you can see they've started conveniently with some basic shapes. So we're gonna start with the cylinder. All you have to do is click cylinder, and you'll see you get a little cylinder. Pop. You just click anywhere on the work plane. It'll automatically glue itself to the work plane. And you'll see you have a box up that says solid and whole. You have some little slider things. Don't worry about those. And then you have a box. If you just put your cursor over, don't click down, you can see it has these little white boxes all around it. And when you mouse over, when you put your mouse over one, you'll see it gets some information. These are called grips. And what they do, you don't have to do this part, I'm just gonna do it. You take those grips and it lets you manipulate the cylinder. I'm gonna hit Control Z. And so you may know this, but just uh, to make sure everybody's on the same page, Control plus Z means undo. So if you make a mistake, Sometimes, unlike in real life, you get a do-over. Yay! So, okay, so we have a basic cylinder here. This is gonna be one part of our wrench. I already have a wrench here. We're doing three parts, you can see. We're doing the closed end, we're doing the shaft, we're doing the open box end. We'll use the closed end first. You can see it's a circle with a hole. Now, we need to give it some dimensions. I have a cheat sheet here. This is in millimeters. It doesn't matter, millimeters, inches, it doesn't matter. Um, you just do the numbers. What we're gonna do is we need to make it, you can see here, if you put your cursor over one of the bottom grips that it is 20 by 20. We need to make it 25 by 25. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm gonna start spreading this out. You can see I grabbed that bottom right, and we'll spread this out to it says 25. Why did I hold down the shift key? That keeps it constrained to a circle. If I did just this, you can see it's all wiggly. It could go anywhere. It's a real pain in the Badinsky to try to get it constrained. Control Z. But by holding down shift, you can see that keeps it a perfect circle. Okay, we have 25 by 25. Do you have a question? Yeah. You can change it to inches. Oh, can I move this? Um, I believe, of course you asked me this question and now it's like, oh, you can change it. Um, Hmm? Yes, there it is, thank you. Yeah, inches, millimeters, or bricks. Bricks, don't worry about it. You can make little Lego bricks with this if you want, but uh, yeah, you can do that. And you can also uh, have preset the size of the work plane. Like for instance, if you want to, you can see it has um, the different plates, the different printing plates for different types of uh, 3D printers here like a maker bot and a Dremel. Yeah, millimeters? Of course, yeah, inches, that'd be, that'd be huge if it was inches. Like, wow, that's a good one. So, okay, cancel, all right. 
Now, got to change the height of this thing to four. So you just grab that top grip and you scooch it down to four. And you can move this around by clicking on it, clicking and dragging anywhere where there's not a grip. So if I want to move this over, I click on it to activate it. That's what the same thing is bringing up the grips is activating it. Then just click and drag on any part of the line on that circle. That's not a grip. If you click and drag on a grip, obviously, you're going to change things, which you don't want to do. Now we need to make a hole. So we're going to make another cylinder. Click and drag out another cylinder. This one's going to be 12.5. Now, if you click and hold down, you can see it's whole numbers only, which makes it difficult. So we'll do something a little different. <clears throat> the good thing about a lot of these programs, <clears throat> uh, a lot of these, uh, these um, 3D programs that they have redundancy built into them. So there's always more way, more than one way to do things. So, excuse me. <clears throat> That's why I brought water. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to click on that grip, that bottom right grip to bring up the numbers, and then we're going to click in the box, like in the top box, you click and it highlights that, and type in 12.5, enter. Go to the bottom box, 12.5, enter. And there you go. Now, we're not gonna worry about the height of this, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Um, what we're gonna do, this is gonna be the hull. So here's what we're gonna do. Make sure that's clicked on, you see solid hull, click on hull in the dial information box there. And congratulations, you've made a hull. Now here's a cool thing. Click on it and let's drag it over and put it inside our first circle. Let me get a little closer. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. Okay, now, trying to get that perfectly aligned, right? Because um, where's my wrench? The wrench, the hole is perfectly in the center, perfectly in the center. So we can't do that just by eyeballing. We have to be very precise. So what we'll do is use a, a really, really helpful tool called Align. So the next thing we'll do is gonna click and drag and make a box from the upper left to the lower right, right corner, right corner that selects both objects. Another way to do this is to click on one and then shift click on the second one. But I like to make boxes. It's a little bit easier and I'm pretty lazy, so. Okay, with me? Now, right underneath you got this box, you'll see it uh, over here on the upper right corner, rubber side, you'll see all these different symbols. We're looking for one called a line. And if you rest your, cur uh, your mouse, your cursor over one of these icons, it of course will give you a label. We like a line, so click on a line, and you'll see you get this fancy little um, modern art, object the art there, that's gonna help you. What this does is this, we use this to align pieces, one or more pieces together. So if you click, we'll see an action here, if you click on the one, the middle dot on the left side, it'll center it in that direction and in that direction and you've centered and aligned both of them. So now that holds perfectly centered. You don't want to do this one up here because this is for height. Whoops, nope, no thank you. There we go. Then click an empty space to deselect. Then click and drag a box one more time, get both objects, and we'll go up here again to the upper right and find the group. Click group. And look, you punched a hole. You have a hole? Yay, okay. 
That's basically it. You're combining, and that's why you don't have to worry about the height because you're punching a hole, so it doesn't matter. As long as the height is higher than the object you're punching the hole out of, you'll be fine. So we don't have to worry about that one. The shaft. Okay, if you're selected, I click, and I'm gonna move this over out of the way. It's like if you ever work crafts, you know, you put your craft stuff up out of, yes, sir. I am. That's gonna be the last thing. Well, it's gonna be the last one. So see, we got the, um, I did the closed in. Now I'm gonna do the shaft, and then I'm gonna do the open polygon. No. Not on this one. You would, but thank you for pointing that out, Nick. I appreciate it. Yeah. No, that's good. I'm just following the tutorial. No, uh, in real life, yeah, actually, in real life, it would be. So, but this is, I think this is for hanging up. Yeah, which I have some in my scene shop. So, so yes, Nick, this is valid. <laughs> no, but that's a good point. Um, but I want to show them punch a hole. We are going to do that on the opening. Okay. Check next step. Box, click, boom. This box is going to be a hundred millimeters long. 89, a hundred. It is gonna be 10 millimeters wide and of course four millimeters high. And that's all to the chat, that's a pretty simple little. Yeah, 100 meter, millimeters by 10 millimeters, and then four high. And once you do that, I'm just gonna put it over there with the closed end. You good? Let me see. Oh, uh, you, no, that's fine. We're, just, we're gonna, in the next one, I'll show you how to flip it. So you're good for now. It doesn't matter which direction it's in. We're gonna manipulate. Because the thing about these 3D things is once you print them, it's manipulating them is the good thing. Okay. All right, time to make another circle. This one is 30 by 30, it's thir or 30 millimeter diameter. And four meters high. I'm gonna go ahead in my cheat sheet here. <laughs> okay, good. Time to do the polygon. You see here we have these basic shapes. We've been drawing from those. You see you can scroll down. You have all sorts of things. Cylinders, spheres, cones, text. More about that later. Polygon. Heart tube. You see, oh, they're just tons and tons. Icosahedron. Definitely put in there for D&D players, Dungeons and Dragons players, I'm sure. We want polygon. We want a size of 15 millimeters. I'm going to use this. Doesn't matter how high it is. And we want to turn it into a hole. And then move it over to the jaws, select them both, align this way and this way. We'll do one more thing though before we um, punch the hole out. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a little closer. And what I'm gonna do is click on the polyhedron, on the polygon itself, I'm gonna grab that black center um, grip and I'm gonna drag it out so it overlaps. See, I don't like that way, so I'm gonna 
Actually, I'm going to grab the point one here. There you go. That's what I like. The prow of the ship there. So it overlaps. Doesn't matter how far. Let me pan over a little bit. If you look, so we have something like that. Got it? And then again, select both of them. Group. Boom. You've made a wrench. Okay, now I've got to put it all together. And to ask you a question, I want to do a top view. Oop. There we go. Um, if something is turned the wrong way, like your shaft, you'll look and see with the grips, you'll see this little bent two-pointed area. You see that? If you click on that, it makes a nifty little compass and you can move 90 degrees or whatever and flip it in the right direction. <clears throat> okay, almost there. Now, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna put the um, shaft in the middle. I'm gonna grab the closed end and I'm gonna bring it over and just kinda sorta overlap a little bit. Like thusly. I'm going to grab both of these by making a box. Incidentally, you can also do click and drag from lower right to upper left as well. Doesn't have to be um, upper left, lower right. Any other direction. Anyway, I'm going to grab them. I'm going to align them just one way. See this end little dot there? What that does is that lines them up along an axis. Okay, you with me so far? I'm gonna take now our wrench in and I'm gonna spin it. Mine's gonna to have to spin 90, but I'm gonna spin it another 30 degrees, so it's at 120. Jilly wrenches, it's easier, if they're at an angle, it's easier to use. Take it from an old stage carpenter. Um, edit out old. Okay, same thing. Just overlap a little bit. Select and grab the shaft in the open end, align. And there we go. So you should have something like that. And then if you select all three of them, anyway, won't well, box, shift plus click, however, whichever makes you happy. Go to group and boom. Congratulations, you have built a wrench. Now, I did this before, and this is where I stopped. But we got all the time, we're gonna add another layer. We're gonna make it a personalized wrench. We'll put lettering right on top of it. Um, you can put your name, you can put your kid's name, you can put uh, anything you want. You can put the word wrench in case the people using your tools are really not that bright. Uh, what we'll do is we'll put some words on it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to change the work plane. See, the work plane is what you work on. It's the deck. It's the tabletop. But we're going to move the tabletop. We'll do the computer. We're going to move the tabletop to the top of the wrench so it can work there. So you'll see work plane. You see that? Click on that, and you'll see a tiny little blue work plane. If you put it on the wrench, it'll give you surfaces. How do you want this work plane? I want it right on top. So I don't know if you can see, let me get a little closer. So we want the work plane to look like this, not this. You see where it's on the side? You want it flat on top and click. And I'll move this one and show you. You can see the work plane is now on top of the wrench. So that's where we're gonna put our letter in. Uh, well, you do want it on the work plane, so probably what you want to do is just move the wrench. Yeah, I would move the wrench over a little bit. There you go. Okay. Where it says Tinkerbed CAD basic shapes, you see a little arrow. If you click on that, it gives you all sorts of categories of different things. You can make your own shapes. Um, you can do character pieces if you want. 
wacky characters. We want text and numbers. Specifically, we want text. You click on that, you'll see big giant words that say text. Just click anywhere. And you'll see, I will do this, right? See, it's on the new workspace on top. Now, when you click on that, you'll see in the uh, dialog box over here to the right, in text, it says text, of course. You don't want to put the word text on things. That's weird. So we want to change it. I'm going to you double click in the box to highlight text. And you can type your own word in. Don't make it long. Don't write a book. Like one word. I'm going to put rich just because. And there you go. Put your name. Like I said, anything you want. Initials. And then we're going to resize it. This is going to be, let me move over a little bit, sorry. Pan, please. This is going to be seven millimeters wide. 70 millimeters long. 1.5 millimeters thick. Once you got that, I'm gonna take it over. I'm gonna put it on top of the wrench. I'm gonna select both and align. Now let me spin over. This way, this way. So now it's dead center. It's a little cattywampus, but I'll be okay with that. Yeah, we'll be fine. I'm checking them. And then you want, you can combine. There, like that. Which is what I did. My new wrench that says wrench on it. Pretty proud of that. So you can put your name. Now, if you want to inset it, right, you can do that as well. We're going to do that. Show you one more trick here. Click on the word wrench. You've seen, probably seen this cone here, right? You're wondering what that is? That moves it up and down in height. So if you take it, you can move minus 150. You might have to type that in. Whoop. Yeah, let's type minus 1.5. With the cone, yeah, see that cone there? I'm sorry? Re yeah, the word selected. And you have to type a minus because it's going down. Right, there's th this, old drafts people, cats people use this. Off. There's three axes, there's the X, the Y, everybody knows that from school, and then the Z. So you're going to the negative Z axis down. Once you do that, you can turn it into a hole Select both the wrench and the word, group it, and look, you've got inset words. You see how that works? Now we're done. New and improved. I'm gonna put the workplace back where I had it for no other reason that I'm very um, retentive that way. <laughs> now you're ready to print. Okay, you've done all this work. You got a wrench printing out over here. What you need to do is export it. So you see up here now, everything's done. You just take this, download for 3D paint, export. Oh, there we go. Uh, everything in the design. Yes, we want the whole ball of wax. Now, there are three different kinds. I tend to use .sdl. Stereo lithography, not that that means anything. You can see OBJ, SDL. I believe you guys take both. Okay, well I'm gonna do SDL because that's what I do on mine. And it'll show you, it gives you weird names. Glorious Trug. Oh, okay. They're weird, but I kind of like them. So I'm gonna leave mine, Glorious Trug. I might even use it as a nickname. 
maybe an Instagram moniker. Gloria Strug says, who would not listen to Gloria Strug? And then it should be, here we are. Glorious truck or whatever it is. There you go. You got a file. Now what? It's no good if you don't print it. So if you're at MUW, you take your glorious truck and you go to 3D printing, right? You can pick out your filament colors <clears throat> if you want. As you can see, so many love. Now, let's talk a little bit about infill. Okay. If you print something like big thing, and I'll explain what the heck this is in a little bit. I don't know if you can see in the light. It won't show up on film, but I'll show you. It's honeycomb. You don't want to print things out full. You don't want solid most of the time. One, it uses up too much of the filament, which you use to print out. So you pick infill. And the more infill there is, the longer it takes to print, but the stronger it will be. So you can see, my mouse here that you have different, uh, Nick has put up here, different examples of infill. And you pick which one you want. Well, how much infill do I need? Well, I would say, yeah, if it's not something that needs to be super sturdy strong, like 30, 40% infill is fine. My wrenches that I printed out, they're a little bendy, they're 40% or 30%. 100% uh, is a lot. You know, if you're, if you're doing, if you're making shoes for elephants, yeah, go 100%, definitely. Or your own horseshoes. I didn't think about it. You can make custom horseshoes. Okay, that's my idea, so don't steal it. Um, anyway, uh, but I would say 30 40%. You put your information in, your student ID if you're a student, email, and then you do a file, anything you want, special instructions, and then you can even see it being printed and get a, a tutorial in the printing process. And boom, there you go. You're printing, yay. The thing about 3D printing though, it takes a long time. This is not print like printing out a term paper. When I made my little wrenches, they weren't too bad. They're 25, I think when I say 30% infill, they took about 35 minutes a piece. So that's pretty good. The, the keychains, a set of four together printed out took an hour. So, um, some of the models that I have here show you, you know, uh, total printing time could be 18, 20 hours. So, it, it's not a quick process. And the first, you know, so there is frustration. It's a tool, it's not a miracle. You can't wave a magic wand. Well, you can make a magic wand and wave it if you want, that's fine. But it's not going to be poof. Oh, here it is. It's not Star Trek. It's not going to be instant. It's not going to come out of the transport. I think I've made that point, so I'm going to shut up now. Um, <clears throat> what was I saying? So anyway, but it is, you know, you have to be patient. And then if you make a mistake, if there is a flaw in what you made, then you got to fix it and start all over again. So there is that caveat. Um, but it is a good tool, and you make some lot of neat things and handy things that you can use. Uh, let see. What else can I tell you here? Um, any questions? Good. If you don't, just a couple of things. If you don't want to make things, I like we said Thingiverse has a ton of stuff you can download. Do what? Yeah, you could, yeah, if you don't want to make a wrench, like why would I make my own stupid wrench? Um, you can get one here. Uh, all sorts of things. Oh, dead, who doesn't need a Deadpool bus? Uh, things like card game, all sorts of stuff. So that's always a good one if you just need some stuff to play with. But I tend to like to make my own things. Um, so uh, I like to know that. Thingiverse, like I said, or uh, Tinkercad is a real good program. It's, it's, um, it's sort of the baby program of another program called AutoCAD, which is um, a very sophisticated drafting program, which I teach courses in, not plugging, because um, it's too late now in this semester. Um, but if you want to, you can learn that or sketch up and do even more advanced things. Um, I've shown you a couple of things, right, that we've done. We make our own brochure holders that we take to theater conventions. We make our own business card holders. Models now, I make a lot of my models using uh, 3D printing. 
It can do tech, I don't know if you can see this on the film, but there's a, a stone texture and wood texture and you can paint it. So, yes, that's not the printed out yet. I spray paint. The, um, 3D filament loves spray paint. This is a, a spray paint called sea glass that I like a lot and use because it's kind of translucent, but those are spray painted. This is spray painted hammered copper, hammered pewter. So. Blend together? Mm -hmm. No, um, you use airplanes with it. Yeah, works really well. Um, but I wanted to show you this. I can't you, this is glue. Uh, Eileen's tacky class glue, Sobo glue. Really good. You can't use this on um, 3D printer, but the reason I'm showing it to you is we use a lot of this in the theater business. Lots of craft glue for putting things together, for putting props together and so forth. And if you've ever used craft glue, you know when you get halfway down, you have to get the bottle, shake the bottle upside down, it drives you crazy. This is one of the most favorite things I invented on the 3D printer. It is a craft glue holder. So, so it will hold the bottle upside down like that and it pop when you're saying get in there. Of course it won't work when we're filming. But the idea is the cap sticks in a little hole. The glue stays upside down until you need it, you use it, you put it back in the cap, it stays nice and fresh until you need it again. So it works great. And then when you're done, it's got a whole bump. So you just use this and pop out that. Just put that together, put it in your backpack, boom. You're done. So, so for tools, one of the best things is inventing and making tools. And I think that is all I have, right? We have done that. We've seen that. There is a printer in action. Um, if you don't know how it works, it's, it's, it's basically filament. It's a type of plastic filament, biodegradable, and it just prints out in layers until you get a 3D item. So it's very versatile. There are lots of different kinds on the market. If you get one, get one with a heated bed. You want the bed heated. One of the first things I realized when I first started is, it is 3D, but it is, there's, you gotta have something that lets the product, object being printed, stick right, to the plate. You don't think about that at first. And the first one I got was a glass plate, and I kept losing these builds because the nozzle would pick up the product, the object being built, and it would mess it up because it wasn't sticking to the plate. So a heated plate is important, so it'll stick, it won't mess up your print. Any questions? Okay, well that's all I have. Thank you very much. <laughs>